So let's go start at the help center and look at the self-service portal. And let me actually back that up to the top of the help center. And as we see here, users have the ability to basically interact with multiple teams. As Rod mentioned during the presentation, we've got customers that are leveraging the Jira service management platform, not just for traditional IT, but also things like facilities. I've got plumbing leak, HR, maybe I want to update my benefits, for example, marketing teams. Hey, I need some brochures for customers. Anywhere in your organization where there's common requests that are coming in that the teams may be struggling with trying to manage those workflows through email or Excel spreadsheets or people with monitors that are just ringed in post-it notes, remind them to do things. Those are all opportunities for digitization in the Jira service management platform. And each of those can have their own micro portals within the Jira self-service center. Or as is the more common scenario, users can just go to the global search and tell us things like maybe Gmail's not working. And as we search through, we're going to search through all of the projects that user has permissions to access and do a couple of things. We're going to one, search Confluence, our, our knowledge-based platform for any relevant articles that may help that customer. And then we're also going to search through the service request catalog for all of my projects to see if there's relevant service requests to make. Now, in this case, let's imagine that I'm having problems with Gmail. It's just not working for me. My first article coming up is Gmail is not working. And as we open that up and look at it from the self-service portal, we can see that we've got much more than simple multimedia content within this particular knowledge article. For example, I can actually embed status metrics around that particular service's health. So I can inform users if we have a known issue with that platform. I can also do things like embed videos directly in it because we're seeing more and more users that simply don't want to read. They want to go find a video. All of those are types of content that we can embed into our knowledge base, enriching that experience for our users. Now, hopefully this would solve this customer's particular challenge. And at the bottom, they can basically give us some metrics and let us know if this article helped them. So we can identify the content that's resonating with our audience and helping them and using that as a snowball to build up and get more content to hopefully deflect potential tickets in the system. Now, let's imagine for a moment that we have a different case. Maybe I've decided that it's not really Gmail that's the issue, it's my laptop. It's just running slow, I want a new one. I can go throw a keyword against a new laptop and as we see a number of service requests popped up from our service catalog. And let's go ahead and request a new notebook. Now, similar to what you're used to with Sherwell, where you can have specific forms for specific types of service requests that come into the system, we can do the same with the Jira service management platform. So this enables me to have a tailored form for each service request type to make sure that we're getting all the details necessary so that when my team receives a ticket, they can focus on fulfilling that request versus picking up the phone and asking a whole bunch of different questions that we forgot to ask right up front. We'll go ahead and fill this out. I'd like a new notebook. And one difference we'll see also right up top is as soon as the customer enters in a summary for a ticket, we take that opportunity to do one more search of our knowledge base. Often I see users that just completely bypass the knowledge base. They don't try to search and solve their own problem. So let's take this opportunity to push up content to them to hopefully deflect as many tickets as possible. Now, in this case, I have reviewed this and I've decided I still want to go on with requesting a new notebook. And from here, I can choose from available models that may be available for my particular user. Looks like I'm a little restricted on this one. I can basically use the attributes of that user to restrict it by department, by what location they're at, to frame specific requests in the system. And let's take a look at slightly different requests. Let's actually take an HR case as an example here. As we see from this service request, the fields that we're gathering are quite different, mostly because it's a different type of request routing to a different team. So just as I mentioned before, we have that ability to basically tailor the experience to make sure we're capturing all the details up front. Now, at any point as a user, I do have the ability to go in and check on the status of any of my tickets. So I can quickly see the status of those tickets. I can also see what teams that has been routed to. In addition to my IT requests, I can also see my HR requests, my facilities. So rather than having to remember 
a dozen or more different websites to make requests for HR or facilities or marketing or any other department, I have that one source that I can go to and see all of my requests and just simplify my life. In addition to that, uh, we also have the ability to manage approvals through the self-service center. So as a manager, if I've got a number of requests that have been re meeting my approval, rather than having to manage all that through email where those emails can potentially get buried, I can simply go to the self-service portal, access any of the requests that have been directed directly to me for approval, and I can approve and deny directly through the self-service center. I can also, by the way, approve via email as well. So I mentioned before, this is just one mode that users can choose to interact with the service desk with the Jira Service Manager platform. In addition to that, we also have some rich chat ops capability. And what I mean by that is my users who may be using Slack or Microsoft Teams have the ability to come in and go to a channel and basically say, need access to Salesforce. We'll use that as an example here. And as we see it, Atlassian Assist, which is bundled as part of the Jira Service Management platform. And I promptly noticed that I've got a request coming in. It'll ask us for a little bit of details, fix an account problem, where we can also capture those specific forms, just like we saw on the self-service center. So I need access to Salesforce, we need admin access, why not? From here, I can go create that particular ticket and we can see immediately we've got a reply in from the system where it's generated that ticket. It's now ticket IPS 2246, where I can always view the status of that ticket from within Slack. Now, what's also interesting is from an IT perspective, if I were an agent, I actually have the ability over in Slack or Teams to see, hey, we've got tickets that just came into the system. I have the ability to basically take ownership of tickets directly from within Slack. I can update the status of those tickets, communicate with the user directly through Slack, essentially work that ticket from start to finish purely within my Slack interface. Uh, particularly handy if I'm mobile, I can always just bring up Slack on my mobile phone, which by the way, there's also a very rich mobile application available for JSM as well that lets me work any ticket remotely. So it just adds additional options for my user base, including for other team. For example, HR, I have the ability to go create HR tickets through the same mechanism or any other team. So I'm not restricted to simply IT within the organization. So we've seen how users can create a few tickets in the platform. And let's go take a look at that from the agent's perspective.